Now, I'll grant you that every year come football season, my interest in wrestling wanes a little bit. No question about it. Football rules reign supreme, especially when it comes to Monday nights. So usually what will happen is, especially now, I'll watch the Monday night game, and then I'll either A, flip to Raw during commercials during the game, or I'll try and watch it the next day on YouTube, or I'll just try to find some of the clips of the featured segments, the highlights of Raw the next day on YouTube. And honestly, that seems to be the better way to watch Raw in general, period. Regardless of what my interest level is. This shit is terrible. That shouldn't surprise anybody. I mean, Vince was going to take even more control of the show this week, so oh my god, you can only fucking imagine what that was going to mean. Another 2.3 something rating, Vince. Way to fucking go, you senile dipshit. And everybody that signs off on this crap, shame on you. And frankly, if you could sit there and actually stomach three hours of this garbage, what the fuck were you smoking? Where the hell can I get some? There's no way on God's green earth that anybody in their right state of mind can sit there and tell you that this week's show was any fucking good whatsoever. I mean, what's sad is you're supposed to be reacting to a bad rating from the previous week. You would think that would equate to some type of effort to actually try and change something and do something fucking different. Not do the exact same shit that gave you the crappy rating the previous week and then dig in your heels and do more fucking of it. Holy Christ, we're supposed to be building up to hell in a cell. So we start off the show with a segment with Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar. Basically the same fucking thing. Doesn't matter if you interject Big Show. Oh, look, it's SmackDown fucking 2003. Big Show and Brock Lesnar are fucking feuding, and Lesnar wipes them out. Whoopee! Hell in a Cell, such a big event. Brock Lesnar versus Undertaker. Such an extravaganza that Taker can't even be fucking bothered to show up to hype up this fucking match. How the hell are people supposed to be interested in the match coming up if one of the two participants in that Hell in a Cell that is clearly going to main event this show and God knows it's going to fucking need to can't be bothered to show up. Doesn't seem to care. Why in the fuck should we care? And as a result, in large part, we probably won't care until the actual night of the event because we know that it's the one match that is actually going to have any type of potential redeeming qualities for this shit fest that could be Hell in a Cell. Then you decide to give us in the second segment, another tag match featuring the Shield and the Wyatt family. Does no one, and I mean no one backstage, have enough fucking pull or power or balls to sit there and go tell Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn that the way you put together this show is fucking stupid. It's a predictable format every fucking week and we are tired of these numerous random ass fucking pointless matches. There is no point to another Shield Wyatt family match. I don't care if you're building up to a Hell in a Cell match between Bray Wyatt and Roman Reigns or not. It's not fucking needed. Stop doing this shit. You keep having these guys touch time after time after time after time. And we can see it on cable TV. Why would we want to pay to see it on non-TV via your WWE network whose streaming quality still sucks about 40% of the fucking time? I tell you what's going to really sit there and draw the people in and suck them in for more is to have a crappy promo segment where now you're still playing off of this corporate came demon came bullshit. You have Seth Rollins come out and be Seth Rollins only to have Stephanie McMahon trying to get the crowd fucking behind her. Nobody wants to cheer this bitch. You were doing us a grave injustice by trying to force us to cheer for her. Which, you know, that's pretty much Vince's M.O. Is fuck what people are actually telling you. Fuck what people actually want. You're going to do what the hell you want anyway. So now you got your dumb dick daughter getting cheered. Going for the cheap pops in Boston with the fucking Patriots talk. Who gives a shit? Why is your daughter trying to get herself fucking over? If any McMahon should be on TV trying to make it about themselves, because at least then it will fucking work. It should have been you, Vince. If it's that bad, get your ass on TV. Stop hiding back in the fucking gorilla position, watching the ratings go down a fucking suck hole of your suck. Seriously, we're giving Kane a freaking title shot. And the big important stipulation is, if he loses, corporate Kane is fired. Who the fuck cares? And then we've got him and Rollins wrestling the Dudley Boys in a freaking tag match on the show. Why are we wasting the Dudley Boys here in a freaking match as a storyline device 
for Kane and Seth Rollins. Then you throw into Dumb Dick Divas matches because shit is Dumb Dick. And of course, we decided to give Nikki Bella and Brie Bella a fucking microphone because that's going to put a lot of asses in the seats, right? The only thing that sucks more than those two girls is the effect on ratings that they fucking have. Who gives them a fucking microphone and builds a segment around them? Ooh, Natalia Page. Who gives a shit? Team Bad versus Team Bella. Who gives a fuck? Revolution, my ass. Some dumb bullshit. And this is how you know that Vince booked this fucking show this week. One segment and one segment alone. Well, some of you might argue the main event, and you'll have a point there. But the one segment, if you pointed to one and only one, and you said that it was indeed Vince McMahon, the HNIC of all that you see with the WWE and Raw this week, it was this dumb-ass freaking marriage proposal shit between Summer Rae and Rusev. Who wrote this shit? In any way, shape, or form, did anybody, namely you, Vince, think that this was compelling television in any way or matter that anybody was going to give a fuck about? Hell, you've gotten to the point now where I think you've got to realize that people just want to cheer Rusev. In. What the fuck are you doing? You've got Summer Rae and a marriage proposal to Rusev. Your show drew a goddamn 2.33 rating last week, and this is how you fucking fix it with Butterface proposing to a hairy Bulgarian brute. Oh, but it's worse. There's more. More! More! We decide to take something like breast cancer and use it as a storyline plot device to try and get fucking John Cena, and now Roman Reigns fucking over. Oh, fucking vomit. Yeah, you work with the charity. whoop de skip de doo Yeah, I don't know if I'll go so far as to say what CM Punk said about Susan G. Komen being a scam. I will, however, point out is that for these organizations, for these charitable groups that go against causes like this, did we ever think that there was such an infrastructure in place, whereas if they actually solve the problem that they're supposed to be trying to fix, that they would no longer be around, what the hell does that mean? You know, it makes you really wonder, is an organization like Susan G. Komen really trying to cure breast cancer? I think that is a fair question. You could say that about a lot of charities. But here we are. And again, you know, WWE is trying to use philanthropy for their TV. I can understand where they think that works, but clearly looking at the ratings, it doesn't fucking work. So, of course, they do this dumb dick shit anyways. And how stupid does it look throughout the whole entire night when you've got several bad guys wearing Rise Above Cancer shirts and they're pink looking all fucking stupid. Now we've got a segment where you've got everybody else up there like they don't fucking matter. You've got the breast cancer survivors and fighters here. But, of course, we've got to feature John Cena and now Roman Reigns in this light, too. You're literally using cancer to try and get these two guys over. That's sickening. That's pathetic. What I would come to expect from the WWE. Oh, but wait, from Cena, there's more. And then we get to the main event, and it's John Cena defending his U.S. title in the main event of a show. Oh my god, it's 2004 SmackDown all fucking over again. The people pop for stupid reasons when Dolph Ziggler's music hits, and then we don't see anybody, so we know something's up. And out comes the freaking New Day. And you're like, oh yeah, Big E could challenge him. John Cena is supposed to be going away for a little while. Would give a shocking, surprising finish if he had Big E go over here, especially since he has two guys that could be there to help him out. So it would be the way to do what's most important to the WWE, which is protect John Cena at all fucking costs, even using cancer to try and get this asshole fucking over. But no, instead... We have Big E job out the fucking Cena because we just can't have fucking Cena lose. Newsflash, Vince. By the time this match happened, it was almost 11 p.m. Eastern. You can't seriously think that Cena appeals to the 18 to 49 demographic that your advertisers are most concerned about. And the demographic that he does appeal to, the 5 to 9 year olds, are long since probably already in fucking bed. You still can't help yourself. You still have to have Cena go over in a fucking glorified 3 on 1 handicap match. He's still got to go over. 
And the whole shit that happens afterwards. The New Day's beating down Cena, but it's a half-ass beat down to have Ziggler come out, only for him to sit there and get hit, to have the Dudley boys come out, to sit there and do this. So that way we can have Ziggler accidentally super kick Cena, so that way we can launch off into that shit. And I can only imagine how many of you are going to joy gas into that dumb dick crap. Oh my god, Dolph Ziggler versus John Cena. You're going to incorporate total divas. You're going to have a match for the squash. And Dolph Ziggler is going to beat Cena and win another mid-card title because that's always been good for his career. Hooray! Yes, the New Day stood tall, but Big E still fucking lost to Cena. It's 2015. And we're still putting Big Show in a big spot. It's 2015, and Kane's getting a fucking title shot. It's 2015, and John Cena's still main eventing fucking role, this time with the U.S. title. The black man can't beat Cena. They can't seem to beat any fucking buddy. Half of your main event for Hell in a Cell can't be bothered to fucking show up. You're not doing anything different or close to compelling with the goddamn Divas division. Why the hell would anybody want to watch this shit? Especially three plus hours consecutive. You gotta be fucking crazy to do so. And or high, and or drunk, and I don't even know if those substances could aid you through this crap. Vince, if your job this week was to sit there and give us the exact same crap and not fix any of the problems, <laughs> job well done! I mean, there's no celebrities, there's no taker, there's no anything. You barely feature Triple H. When you do feature your fucking daughter, you've got us trying to cheer her because you're stupid. The show's so bad, it could probably use a Mr. McMahon sighting at this point in time. Nothing interesting happens. Nothing compelling happens. Nothing at all of any type of real spontaneous nature that makes you want to tune in next week to see what the fuck is going to happen next. It's the same old shit. Ain't nothing different.